okay i am talking about uh, the first chapter here which is uh, the economic growth so this reading here focuses on uh, the factors that determine the long term growth trend in an economy as a part of development of global portfolio equity and fixed income investor must be able to determine both the near term and the sustainable rate of growth within a country doing so requires identification and forecasting of factors that determine uh, the gdp growth and or whether that growth is sustainable whether it would continue for some time uh, the growth that is sustainable for, or uh, the sustainable growth rate is measured by rate of increase of company's economic uh, productive capacity or potential gdp the growth in real gdp measures how rapidly the total uh, economy is expanding per capita per capita gdp defined as real gdp divided by population measures the standard of living of each country the growth rate of real gdp and the level of per capita real gdp vary widely among countries as it is investment opportunities differ in various countries where we would be investing equity market respond uh, to anticipated growth in earning higher uh, sustainable economic growth should uh, lead to higher earning growth and equity market valuation if we assume all other things are constant the best estimate for long term growth in earning for a given country is the estimate of growth rate of gdp and the long run growth rate earning cannot exceed the growth in potential gdp labor productivity is critical because it affects the level of uh, upper limit a permanent increase in productivity will raise the upper limit of earning growth and should translate into faster long run economic growth and corresponding increase in stock price appreciation for global fixed income investor a critical macroeconomic variable is the rate of inflation one of the best uh, indicators of short to intermediate term of inflation difference between growth rate of actual and potential gdp capital deepening and increase in capital to labor ratio occurs when growth rate of uh, capital net investment exceeds the growth rate of labor in a graph of output per capita versus capital to labor ratio it is reflected uh, by a move along the curve the production function an increase in total factors of productivity causes a proportional upward shift in the entire production function One method for measuring sustainable growth rate uses the production function and the growth accounting framework developed by Solow. It arrives to a conclusion that the growth rate of potential GDP is estimated by the growth rate of economies capital and labor inputs plus an estimate of total factor productivity. An alternative method measure potential growth as the long term growth rate of labor force plus a um, long term growth rate of labor productivity. The force is driving economic growth rate the quantity and quality of labor supply uh non ict and ict capital public law raw material technological knowledge the labor supply is determined by population growth the labor force participation rate net immigration the physical uh, capital stock in a country increases the net investment the correlation between long term economic growth rate and rate of investment is high technological advances uh, are discoveries that make it possible to produce more or high quality of goods and service with the same resources or inputs technology is a major factor determining tfp tfp is the main factor affecting long run sustainable economic growth rate in developed countries and al- uh, also includes the cumulative effect of scientific advances applied research and improvement in management methods total factor productivity estimated uh, uh, estimated using a growth accounting equation is the residual component of growth once the weighted uh, contribution of uh, all uh, explicit factors which is labor and capital accounted for labor productivity is defined as output uh, per uh, worker or per hour work growth in labor productivity depends on capital deepening and technological progress the academic growth literature is divided into three categories uh, the classical view the neo classical view and the new endogenous growth view in the classical model growth in per capita income is only temporary because an exploding population will limit resources and bring per capita income to an end In the neoclassical model, a sustained increase in investment increases the economic growth rate uh, in the short run. Capital is subject to diminishing margin returns, so long-term growth rate solely depends on population growth, progress in TFP, and labor share of income. The neoclassical model assumes that productive function exhibits diminishing marginal productivity with respect to any individual input. The point at which per capita p- uh, per worker and output per worker are going at equal sustainable rates are is the steady rate and balanced growth rate in the economy in the steady state the total output growth at the rate of labor forces uh, growth plus the rate of tfp divided by elasticity with respect to labor unit 
the, the parameters that affect the steady uh, values to capital to labor ratio and output per worker are saving rate, labor force rate, growth in TFP, uh, depreciation rate, elasticity of output with respect to capital. The main criticism of neoclassical theory is that it provides no quantifiable predictable of the rate or the form of TFP change. TFP progress is regarded as exogenous to the model. Endogenous theory explains the technological progress within the model rather than treating it as exogenous. As a result, self-sustaining growth emerges as a natural consequence of the model and economy does not converge to a steady growth rate uh, that is independent of saving investment. Season. Unlike the neoclassical model where increasing capital will result, uh, result in diminishing margin return, the endogenous growth model allows for possibility of constant or even increasing return in the aggregate economy. In the endogenous growth model, expenditure made on R&D for human capital may have large positive externalities of spillover effect. Private spending by companies on knowledge capital generate benefit to the economy as a whole that exceeds the private benefit to the company. The convergence hypothesis predicts the rate of growth of productivity and GDP should be higher in the developing countries. Those higher growth rate imply that the per capita GDP gap between the developing and narrow over time, the evidence is on the convergence is mixed. Countries fail to converge because of low rate of investment and saving, lack of property rights, political instability, poor education, health, restriction on trade, tax and regulation policy that discourage work and investing. Opening in an economy to financial and trade flows has major impact on economic growth. Evidence suggests that more open and trade oriented will grow at a faster rate. So that was the summary of uh, the chapter. Now we are going to look at uh, some of the questions that we could probably get. Let's look at a few type of questions to open up our mind uh, on what we can get in this chapter. So in the questions that you can get, uh, it would talk about uh, uh, the developed country with a high level of capital per worker, technological progress uh, and more intensive use of technology can help developed countries increase productivity and thereby increase uh, per capita GDP. Most developed countries have reasonably low trade barrier, thus somewhere free trade is likely to have an increment and probably transact impact on capital GDP. The ratio of profit to GDP if it's trending upward over the past year uh, and is well above the uh, rate. So, uh, rate of profit to GDP cannot rise forever. At some point, the stagnant labor income would make uh, workers to unwilling to work without an increase which would cause uh, undetermined demand. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, the neoclassical model. Converges should occur more quickly if economies are open and there is free trade international borrowing lending. Opening up economies should increase uh, the rate at which the capital revenue converges among countries. However, the neoclassical solo model after relocation of world saving, there is no permanent increase in the growth rate in the economy, but the developed countries eventually grow at same steady rate. So, political instability, etc., contribute uh, to the difference in the rates in the developing economy. Then you have total factors of production. Is there, uh, there is no numerical as such here in this chapter. 